So I'm Roy Johnson here at the ADRBC 2019 Symposium, and I'm here with Shannon Salter, who's the chair of the Civil Resolution Tribunal. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Roy. Nice to see you. You too. Tell me a little bit about the, the work that you do there and about the Civil Resolution Tribunal. Sure. So the C Civil Resolution Tribunal, or CRT, opened its doors virtually in 2016. At that time, we were and still are actually the first online tribunal in Canada, and there weren't really any other examples in the world to follow at that time. But in the three years that we've been operating, it's exciting to see online dispute resolution really take hold in a whole variety of jurisdictions around the world. And of course, during that time, the CRT has gone from being quite small and resolving only strata property disputes to expanding quite a bit over the last couple of years. Interesting. And by online, how do you mean? Like, do people do video mediations or do they appeal to an arbitrator? Is it all documents? How does that work? Yeah, well, the CRT is an administrative tribunal, so it's part of the public justice system, much like the other 28 administrative tribunals in British Columbia. And what that means is that at the end of the process, you get an enforceable tribunal order, which is also enforceable as a court order. So you can take it down to the court and enforce it as you would any court order. But to back up to the beginning, the way that people engage with the CRT can be through their smartphone, it can be through their office or their home, it can be after their kids are in bed, really wherever and whenever it works for them. Uh, we know that people have a variety of circumstances, they live around the province. Um, and so our goal really is to take the public justice system, bring it to people and build it around their lives. And being online is just one of the ways that we do that. Interesting. So it sounds efficient and I imagine that that would translate to more cost effectiveness. What are the costs associated with that? For the uh, person who's participating, there's an application fee of $125 and that takes you through the mediation phase. And then if your case is not able to be settled through uh, one of our mediators' help, then you pay an additional fee for the case to be adjudicated by a tribunal member who makes a binding determination. Um, I should say though that there's also really generous, easy to use fee waiver processes for people who have a low income. Uh, so if you have a low income, you can just apply online to have your fees waived. Great. And so, and this year at the 2019 symposium, uh, you're speaking to a relatively new piece around ICBC? That's right. We started adjudicating strata property disputes in 2016. We did that for about a year before we were given jurisdiction over small claims disputes, $5,000 and under. And then just this past April, April 1st, we assumed jurisdiction over what we expect to be most motor vehicle disputes in British Columbia. Uh, so we're two months into that, but we only assume jurisdiction over accidents that happen April 1st and beyond. So the ramp up for that is a bit more gradual. And that's what I'll be talking about on the panel today. Interesting. I, ho I hope I never have to come before you folks having been in an accident. I but it's, <laughs> it know, sounds like a necessary piece given what we see in our media about some backlogs there with ICBC. So. Yes, definitely wouldn't wish for anybody to be in a car accident. But if you are in that situation, our goal is to make sure that you have a dispute resolution mechanism that is affordable, understandable, plain language, focused on collaborative dispute resolution wherever possible and really built to fit in around your life. Excellent. And so in closing, how would you advise ADR practitioners who are curious about this, the CRT? Are there opportunities for ADR practitioners to participate or what would you advise folks who may be curious about it? Well, the first step would be just to go to our website at civilresolutionbc.ca and I think what you'll quickly find is that our process is very much focused on alternative dispute resolution. In fact, it's not even really an alternative. It is the primary form of dispute resolution at the CRT. So we first uh, give people free legal information and tools to help resolve the dispute themselves, but we know most people need some help. Uh, so the next stage is an opportunity to negotiate with the other side. And if that doesn't work, then one of our expert mediators steps in and works with the parties through whatever communication method they prefer to help them reach an agreement if they can. And then last but not least is adjudication where a tribunal member makes a binding determination. So lots of opportunities for people who have excellent dispute resolution skills. We are expanding very rapidly and will continue to do that over the next couple of years. And what that means is there's a lot of opportunities for mediators to uh, join our team and also for people who have excellent adjudicative skills and subject matter expertise with motor vehicle disputes uh, to apply to uh, be part of our uh, tribunal member cohort as well. So stay tuned and definitely visit the website civilresolutionbc.ca for more opportunities. 
Sounds great. It sounds like a real growing uh, mechanism and something that in a few years we're going to say, what were we doing without it? So <laughs> well, I hope so. Congratulations. Thank you for spending some time with me, Shannon. Have a successful panel and thank you for joining us at the symposium. Thank you very much, Roy. My pleasure.